so just as an intro to this video uh, my camera isn't quite high enough the tripod so I want to raise it so I finally found a good use for my PhD thesis so today I'm talking to you about this book it is for clinicians and it is to help improve our practice when supporting women and girls with autistic autistic spectrum condition autism so it's written by Fiona Fisher Bullivant or her name is something like that. I'm not good with the names thing. This seems to be a running theme in my book reviews. Anyway, it's written by her, Fiona, and she has got loads of experience, so like 30 years of experience working with people uh, on the spectrum um, in CAMS. So really, really good, practical, down-to-earth advice from a specialist nurse working on the front line. Um, so the book basically came out of Fiona's frustration working with uh, young women with autistic spectrum condition and feeling like we could do this better uh, essentially um, and I think their frustration too um, and so in the book she works directly with young women affected by um, autism and they come up with suggestions and guidelines really really practical stuff that clinicians can use to improve their practice um, and the, the, the nice thing about the book is it feels really doable so it's all about building the right kind of relationships essentially and it recognizes some of the bits where we might go wrong and the different approaches um, that we might take and it's not about saying hey you're getting this all wrong now it's about saying these are some things you might do slightly differently or these are things you might look out for so it's kind of I don't know it, it kind of it doesn't feel judgmental like sometimes these things can but rather it's supportive it's building on your existing skills I guess rather than criticizing your current practice so I will just um, show you the, the contents here, hopefully now. Um, and so you can see that um, the, the book kind of works through in a fairly logical fashion, which is great for people like me who are autistic, love this. Um, the, yeah, so we kind of understand, first of all, why we're looking at girls and young women and understanding that this is a bit different than working with boys and men and that we might not recognize that it masks quite often. Um, we then meet three people who tell their stories throughout this. And the nice thing is that we hear from them and also from their parents and caregivers too so you get these different insights throughout the book which is really nice it really brings it to life so you've got both the kind of clinical experience of Fiona um, and so the professional working on the front line then also um, the, the the women themselves and, and, and girls themselves and then their families too so you've got these different viewpoints which really kind of gives a richness to the book um, and gives you lots of different angles from which to look at this and different points of view as well so I think that's the other nice thing is that um, so Millie, Darcy and Esther have quite different experiences and that shines through throughout the book and it just really reinforces that, you know, whilst the book can give you guidance and ideas, actually, you know, when you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism and that we need to be flexible um, and be reflective of our practice and always be looking to develop it. Um, then we kind of work on through so it starts with relationships and it's really key here um, the relationships form the kind of the bedrock of the whole of the rest of the book so that chapter is really important um, and then we kind of work on through about how we can um, ensure we get appropriate diagnosis comorbidities is a great chapter I think that's one that many of my network will find especially helpful so we look at things like uh, comorbid anxiety in case you're not a clinician comorbidity just means two different things alongside each other or multiple things alongside each other so you might be um, or autistic and have an eating disorder or autistic and have a diagnosis of anxiety for example um, and it looks at uh, how uh, sometimes these comorbidities are easily missed uh, for example and the signs that we might uh, look out for um, and then there's stuff around assessment and intervention so it's really thorough and um, it is uh, like many of the books I like not huge um, but yeah really um, really thorough so to give you a bit of an idea I'll show you a few pages that I've picked out um, so I'm looking first at page uh, 18 um, this is in the comorbidities chapter um, and this um, page I picked out because it's looking at OCD obsessive compulsive disorder and what that might look like um, in women um, with autism um, and noticing why we might sometimes overlook it and what this might look like and realizing that the OCD might sit separately to the autism but the two conditions might sort of feed off each other etc so I think that's a really nice um, example of how helpful that comorbidities uh, chapter is um, in improving our understanding. Um, then I wanted to highlight page 34. Um, now I really like page 34 because it's basically a list of reasons why um, we shouldn't see 
always the diagnosis of autism as a terrible thing but that actually if instead we embrace this and we work with the the person who we're supporting um, that actually there are parts of those autistic traits that can prove to be really beneficial um, in terms of supporting them um, so yeah thinking about their their ability to see detail um, and how helpful and um, that can be so I like that because it's really positive and quite often we take a bit of a deficit approach to things like autism and we think it's all doom and gloom and actually this helps us to spin that on its head and gives us some really positive and proactive stuff that we can do uh, as clinician. Um, and then I wanted to highlight page 43 um, because this is kind of, this feels like the crux of the book really. Um, so page 43 is in the chapter where we're looking at the relationships that you can build with someone with autism. Um, and this in particular is about being humane. Um, and I particularly picked out this bit, both because I think it really highlights the approach of the book um, and gives you a real flavor for what this is like. Um, but also this shows um, how the author has drawn on the experiences of both Millie who is a young woman who is autistic um, and also her parent Lisa um, and it also shows how much difference this you know changing the approach can take so Lisa says when she was finally given an appointment the meeting was excruciating to watch she sat rocking in a chair and picking invisible flecks out of the air it felt as if she was being interrogated and she couldn't answer the questions that were being put to her and so on um, and so forth um, but then Millie says you know what happened after she had a more positive therapeutic relationship it was so important to feel a connection with someone who was there to help I didn't feel like a number in a system I felt like a person who mattered and who was actually cared about so you see how much difference it can make when we take time to, to change our approach a little bit so it's yeah, great book. Three three things. I always like to think of three things that I most like about a book. So I think this falls into my small but mighty criteria. So many books that I really like tend to be quite short, really concise, but pack a mean punch. Um, and this is definitely one of them. Like it's a short book, but there's so much information in here and it's one you could keep returning to in order to try and kind of improve your, your practice. Um, Secondly, um, I really like the fact that there's really good practical advice and ideas here, but that it's building on your existing strengths rather than just looking um, at where current weaknesses might be in your practice. Um, and then finally, I really love the mix of um, kind of clinician input um, and then also the lived experience from the young people um, and their parents as well. So there's lots of different voices kind of telling this story and letting you see it from different points of view. Um, and I think that's a real really sort of valuable um, part of the book. So um, I would recommend it. I mean, it's aimed primarily at clinicians um, to help you improve your practice, but actually anyone who is doing significant amounts of work building relationships with young women with autism or women of any age, I guess, of with autism, um, it would be worth, worth a read really. I think it's a bit of an eye opener um, and can help to just improve your understanding um, of those girls and young women that you might be working with. So um, yeah, don't think it's not for you just because you're not a clinician. I would certainly yeah consider getting hold of a copy uh, and giving it a go yeah. um i hope it was helpful uh please do subscribe for new videos on tuesdays and fridays and i'll see you next time bye